Hi there, uh, Normal C2. Uh, this is Jay. Hope you're okay, mate. Just got your video just now. Uh, so it was a really good video that you did. Uh, really good reply. Um, so I'd like to just take the opportunity, if that's okay, just have a, a constructive dialogue with you. And if you want to make another video or, uh, or a couple of videos in dialogue, I'd be very grateful for the opportunity to talk to you about it. I'm just going to sit over here, just get a bit more uh, comfy. Um, just get a bit more comfy. Uh, bro. Okay. Um. So, I watched your video and uh, I thought it was a good video actually. I um, was quite impressed. So, thanks for your video, mate. Um, sorry, it's getting. It's going to be a few minutes because I, I just want to explore a few things. Um, so, this is the video. Uh, that I did on uh, gay marriage, uh, Cameron repent, and I took the video down because I just think that the chances of the channel being pulled down or the chances of gay rights activists um, getting the video taken down and me getting taken off YouTube would be pretty high, so I took the video off. Um, but that just shows you that, you know, I don't feel that really I have a voice and I don't think millions of Christians do feel that they have a voice on the issue because if they do speak out and they do say what they want, they're in fear of being, uh, having their voice taken away. I can't even use the word persecution because if I use the word persecution, gay and lesbian rights activists will get all uppity on that and start to cause problems for me so that's the kind of situation that I feel I'm in but anyhow that's just to one side I'm just telling you why I took the video down um, so I, I just want to talk a, a few minutes and you know it's so important that there's so many issues that I want to explore and if you could come back at me um, you you kind of saying like that secular is provide uh, for religious autonomy uh, and they don't interfere with the church etc and there's nothing to worry about well correct me if I'm wrong but in France um, they tried to or they have made an issue concerning uh, Muslim women wearing the burqa um, and there are situations in the UK where Catholic adoption agencies have had to withdraw uh, from being involved in adoption because they can't come up to the requirements of being open to gay parents adopting children. Um, uh, there are examples of gay uh, Christian business people who have been uh, taken to court because they don't want to, to have their hotel room open to a, a gay couple having a room and they've made it clear that they're Christians and the, the gay uh, couple have still come and they've still wanted their rights so all I'm saying is is that you know there is this tension between the secular and the church or secular and, and religion and I don't think that um, it's as rosy as you paint it um, so I, 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 I could give you a long list of examples in the UK um, which I've done in the past of time and time and time again of uh, Christian rights are being taken away for example street preaching is an example where there is there are examples of street preachers being taken to court for street preaching if they mention gay and lesbian issue um, there are uh, teachers who've been taken to court 
if they've worn a cross when they're in hospital working as a nurse or whatever uh, or as a teacher etc um, so there are there are there is this uh, encroachment on um, Christian rights and it's okay talking about the secularism but you have to agree you have to agree and you but you need to be honest about this there are aggressive secularists you could call them a, a militant atheist you could call them whatever that kind of scenario where they are constantly pushing the barriers constantly politically active uh, in pushing uh, Christianity out of public space so secularism is not this neutral beautiful thing that is giving everybody rights there are groups within it who are manipulating it for their own ends and trying to minimize religion in public space and my argument has always been that public space is for everybody it is for the gay and it is for the church and public space is to be shared okay and there has to be a balance between uh, everybody's rights within public space now in the situation with the gay and lesbian situation with marriage is the the in Britain I don't know what it's like in France if that's where you're based but in Britain the British government are rushing ahead with this legislation uh, they said they would do it in consultation but they are rushing ahead uh, and they are not giving and here's the point that I want you to to answer is they are not actually asking the British people to vote on this subject they're actually implementing trying to implement something that they have not got a democratic mandate so that's why I'm pr even more angrier than I would normally be is that a, a significant constitutional change to British society is being made without the British people being allowed to vote on it because of a few intellectual elites in the Liberal Party that have been able to uh, push the Conservatives uh, to move forward in this direction so I feel that the, in Britain there has to be uh, a, a vote for the, by the British people to institute this policy or not so that's the, that's the main issue for me is the right of people to be allowed to vote on this issue it's more significant the other thing that can I find very concerning and I know you've addressed it in your video but I don't think you realize um, the problem is once you make the legislation that uh, it, it's okay to have a gay marriage then you have effectively given that as a right okay that is a right so you are perfectly then within your right if you go to a church and you say I want to be married in that church and they say no then you can take that church to court and you can take them to the European Human Rights and you will win because it's enshrined in law that it's your right and so you can say well you know religious freedom is not going to be affected in any way but that's just not true that is just not true uh, it only takes one gay couple to say I want my rights and that's the end of religious freedom uh, so I don't think the Western governments and Western society has thought it through all you want to do uh, as secularists is say right well it's a civil matter we'll give people gay rights and we'll let them have a marriage uh, have marriage rights and that's all there is to it and there's no problem with it no big deal etc uh, but there is a big problem and that problem is this is that secularists are defining what it is to to be married they're defining uh, what secular society should be they're doing it not on the basis of any authority so I mean I'd be interested to know by what authority you have or the state has or individual has in saying that gay marriage is right by what authority do you say that 
there is no rational basis to say that being uh, having a gay marriage there is no rational basis I, I and I, please challenge me on it but there is no rational basis for gay marriage what I mean by this is is that the the evolution is the basis of secular society evolution is based on nature and nature doesn't say anything about morals so how can you build a, a society on morals from a system that doesn't have any morals evolution doesn't have any morals it's based in nature nature doesn't say anything about morality so if you're saying as a secularist it's okay to have gay marriage on what basis there is no justification intellectually to say that is is right that is a right way to go about things in other words there's a double double standard and a hypocritical standard basically you're saying that gay marriage is okay from a secularist point of view but yet your secularism is based on evolution and there is no basis for morality under an evolutionary kind of ethics of you building from that system there's just no way you can do it it just doesn't make sense now you might talk about social norms but what are social norms social norms can change next year the year after whatever basically what it comes down to is this is that secular society and secularist government uh, are walking in the way of their own ideas their own idolatry of what they think is right but there is no intellectual or moral justification for doing it and yet it comes across with a dogma that is more stronger sometimes than the middle ages because if anybody actually speaks out and says something against this dogmatic morality that has no intellectual basis whatsoever then you are hounded and your voice is taken away now you say you, you talk the, the thing that that gets me with you what you're saying is it impresses me and it gets me it impresses me about your rationality and your calmness that impresses me you know it impresses me mightily the the calmness and the rationality and the humanness of the way you talk <laughs> not like me so passionate I can't help it but but what disturbs me is it's not based in reality what you're saying the reality is that in America for example there is a vicious culture war concerning this there is a vicious culture war where there is uh, one side pitted against the other and it's quite a fractured bitter culture war in Britain and I don't know what it's like in the rest of Europe you probably know a bit more about this there is an apathy uh, uh, to religion so people are not too particularly bothered but what is not being realized within the secular West within Britain uh, and, and probably further afield is that there are many millions of Christians who feel extremely strongly about this and this is the thing that's being underestimated in our Western democracies people feel extremely strongly about this religious people and their voice is not being listened to in this situation it's just being brushed aside and pushed away and we're saying that this is a major change in our western civilization and we fear that it's a dangerous precedent and it will bring moral anarchy and bankruptcy in our nations and we have a voice and we want to be heard on that uh, that's something that's not being listened to that's not being taken seriously that's just pushed to one side let's get secular we're just secularists we're going to have gay marriage there's no big deal about it there's no big hang up we've grown up we're, we're sophisticated we're more educated now we're not as bigoted etc well if that's the way you feel about it history is against you there is no society in history that has gone down this road and has ever survived I guarantee you within 20 years the Western civilization will be crumbling like you've never seen it before I guarantee it and it's already happening now um, the other thing as well is if you make gay marriage uh, marriage uh, same-sex marriage legal then that means in the school and education system young people are going to be taught this 
and that means the state's going to be t teaching this and I don't think the state has a right to teach it. I don't think the state has a right to teach it in the schools and colleges. I think it's immoral and I think that religious people need to stand up and say no we're not having it in the schools and we will teach Christianity in the schools. <laughs> All right? Because I think Christianity is right, I think it's based on truth and I think it needs to be taught what is the right way to have a marriage and conduct oneself and that is from a biblical perspective and so we need to oppose it gay marriage because it will affect our education system and how we educate people that's another issue that I think is important I mean basically it it just isn't going to happen anymore that the church and Christians are going to roll over it's just not going to happen it's not good if you think oh well um, it's okay you, you you're dinosaurs we're going to implement gay marriage in France and in England and it's all going to go fine and we'll let churches do it if they want to and if these other churches don't want to do it well they're the diehards well that just isn't going to happen what's going to happen is the church is going to wake up and it's going to become militant and it's going to make a stand on this and there's going to be a, a lot of political social upheaval and conflict the Christians won't be violent the Christians will do their political activism in in a loving and in a law abiding way as far as they can go they might break the law in terms of Gandhi style or Luther King but they will do political activism and they won't put up with this so those are just some things there's other things I want to talk about um, but basically bottom line is it's a it's a major conflict it's just bottom line and it, and it and you know you can brush it under and say oh Jay um, you know everything's fine and I'm impressed by that I'm impressed by your reason and rationality but uh, there's going to be conflict uh, you've just got to face the fact that we're, we're heading for a major 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 conflict um, and I'm not going to put up with it and I hope other Christians don't put up with it um, it will the church will go underground in the West the church will begin to meet in houses because once you legalize being uh, having a gay marriage then you will have criminalized churches and you can say well Jay it just won't happen you've got religious freedom but it's just not reality that's just not reality you've crossed the line in the West and you've not thought it through you've not thought it through you thought you could bring in gay marriage and it wouldn't affect religious freedom well I'm sorry it is going to affect religious freedom it's going to take away religious freedom and you can't have one without the other and by giving the freedom for people who want gay marriage you will have taken away the freedom of those who want freedom of religious conscience you would have taken that away you can't have both it's, it's an either or you either stop gay marriage and allow religious people to have their freedom or you implement gay marriage and religious people lose their freedom it, it, you can't have a middle way it just will not work because in the end of the day you're nailing your cause to the mask as a state you're saying gay marriage is fine gay marriage is be proud of it we're proud of it as a state and anybody else who says so says not so will be in danger of being a criminal and breaking the law for saying so but that's where it's at so it, it's a major major change in our in in history of western civilization and I don't agree with you about secularism and, and that it's this nice sweet thing and if you look at the history of secularism there's always been a massive influence of Christianity within it and it's only been able to be democratic because it's had a Christian influence but now the Christian influence is taken away I feel that the, the democracy in, in the West uh, is deteriorating and will deteriorate and will become more manipulative and more authoritarian and more controlling and it, I don't I, I, I agree with George Orwell's 1984 
and I agree that that is the kind of thing that we'll look into in the future where the state is more manipulative and manipulating us and, and controlling us, trying to control us so I don't take this rose tinted glasses of secularism so the, that's basically how I feel um, and I don't know what the answer is but I, I know that that Christians are called to conflict in this that there's going to be a lot of social political upheaval and it's not going to go smoothly it might have gone smoothly in other countries but it ain't going to go smoothly in Britain it will not go smoothly because even if they do even if they do bring in even if they do bring in gay marriage right even if they do that then I vow I vow me I vow to do everything I can in my power to show this country that they need to stop and think before they actually continue down this line now when I mean I will do everything in my power that is not a threat of violence because I don't believe in violence I don't believe in military action or anything like that but um, as someone who, who who admires Gandhi and who admires Martin Luther King I will begin political activism like they did and I will and I will do everything I can to stand up for the freedoms of religious people especially the, the church and that's how I, I feel about it I feel very very strongly about it if the gay people want to have marriage then that's up to them if the state wants to have marriage that's up to them but first of all let the people decide give the British people a right to vote and secondly secondly um, don't interfere with the church and the state is interfering with the church it is playing politics with the church and that's what I feel I feel very strongly about it I feel Jesus is Lord he's Lord of the church so the state keep away he's Lord not you he's Lord of our sexuality he defines who we are not us not our sexuality Jesus defines our sexuality and Jesus is the one that wants us to follow his way and follow his teaching and I believe that the state is is just completely trampling that underfoot and I believe the gay rights is trampling it underfoot and I believe that you're trampling on Christ and his authority and you're not allowing people who take a different opinion than you you you, you are but there are many out there that won't allow us to have our voice that's why I've taken that other video down and you know you're trampling people are trampling on the authority of Christ and Christian rights that's how I feel and uh, I know I've gone on but that's that's just how I feel I, I feel very very strongly about it um, I don't wish any harm to gay people I wish them all the best and lesbian people I wish they would come to know the Lord Jesus Christ and follow his way I believe that the bishops and and clergy that are promoting gay rights and gay and lesbian marriage are not biblical they are apostate they are not following true Christianity they're not following the faith of once delivered to the saints I believe the Prime Minister is leading the nation into moral bankruptcy and moral degeneracy degeneracy and I believe the West is heading for moral collapse because you cannot go down this line without it having such an upheaval and it will you think it'll be all nice and all hunky dory it's not going to be nice you see you see in the next couple of months and weeks ahead great social convulsions in the west and that will be God's judgment upon us for going down the way that we've gone that's what I feel I'm not scaremongering but that's what I feel uh, because I believe God is real and we can't mock him.
and I and everybody need to turn to him seek forgiveness and his mercy and walk his way so I do thank you for uh, a lovely video that you made a thought provoking video and I'm sorry that mine's a lot longer um, but there's lots of issues there that you can pick up on thanks for listening and take care